Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, we're checking out the Studio One remote app. The crew over at PreSonus have been nice enough to create this app, and it's been around for a while, but we've never actually done a dive into how to set the app up and what are some of the controls that you can do within the app. The app is Android and iOS available. Today we're going to be using it on one of my actual older iPads. This thing is teeny tiny and I let my kids play with it for a while, but now we're going to use it as the remote. Don't worry, even though I'm using this iPad and looking at everything here, you're going to see everything on screen just like this. Cool. So when we're looking at just our blank page, however you want to start things, we're going to go into the Studio One remote app. When you load this up, first thing you're going to want to make sure is that all of your machines that you're using and the iPad itself are connected to the same network. So the iPad or whatever you're using is connected via Wi-Fi and your computers can also be connected to Wi-Fi. My setup, I have everything hardwired minus the iPad. It'll still work because it's all in the same network, but just make sure that everything is using the same Wi-Fi or the same network. Yours will also look a little different from mine because most likely you're just running one instance of Studio One, where in my case, obviously you can see I'm running two different instances, but the one I wanna control is gonna be on my PC today. So we're gonna go ahead and go into that. Hey guys, one thing I forgot when I was recording the initial video to make sure that the Studio One remote can connect to your DAW. You're gonna to wanna to go into your settings, underneath general, go to network, and ensure that allow remote control apps to discover this DAW, you want this one checked. All right, back to the main video. Before we go into, there are some useful buttons down on bottom. You can get a demo with the second button in, so you don't actually have to connect it to any of your sessions. You can change it from light mode or dark mode or sync to your DAW with this third button here. If you need some help, obviously you press the first one and it'll give you the little manual. That also pops up the first time you open up this app, but if you ever need to remember anything, just hit the question mark and it'll bring you in. And then the scan button will rescan looking for instances of Studio One that are open within your network. So if you're not seeing your session, maybe you started the remote but didn't let Studio One go all the way in or you don't have a session open right now. So you can just hit scan and it will rescan your network showing you what's available. Now that we have our stuff together, you click on whichever session you want to go into. Again, yours is probably just going to be one. Mine's different. And this is what we're initially looking at when we go into the app. We're looking at a smaller version of the mixer. So up along top is our timeline. And as I use my finger to scroll left and right on here, I can then navigate and say, well, you know what? I want to move my playhead to the 15 second mark. And if I was going to hit play, it would jump forward in my session to the 15 second mark and go from there. Underneath that, we have our meters. So it'll show you the playback meters of all of your available tracks. And they're just numbered here. And they're numbered on the meter bridge. And that corresponds to what you're looking at in the fader section. So for my kick, which is this one right here, you can see just above our control or just under our meters that we're, this is track one. So the corresponding meter up on top, the mini meters is highlighted and you can see kick is highlighted. So that's what we're playing with right now. Showing you the DAW as well as the controller within the remote app. Look at my kick. You can see that it's selected here. If I was gonna use the remote app to control the fader, I'm now moving my fader remotely and here we go. Conveniently enough, down on bottom, there is an undo button. So we're just gonna hit that a couple of times and reset our fader. Underneath the miniature meter bridge up on top is your master mute and your master solo buttons. That's on the left-hand side. And then you have your individual channel mute and solo buttons as well as record arm and your input monitoring buttons like we see here. So if we wanted to go through our different tracks that we have, you can just use your finger and scroll left or right and the faders will move along. And so you can see where you are inside of your session. And if you're like me and color code things, you know exactly where you are because you probably follow the same color code. So as I'm scrolling, there's my bass, here's my drums, come back over, there's my guitar and there's my keys or pianos. So keeps things very handy because now I know exactly where I am. If I need to go make any adjustments, I can do it right here. 
On the right side, we have our listen bus, and we also have our main bus over here. I'm just gonna tap on the word main to highlight it. Same thing for listen bus if you wanna do anything there. So if you need to make any kind of changes to the levels of either your listen bus or your main, you can do it here. You can also turn on or off the playback of the click track through your main bus or your listen bus, whatever you wanna do. Also some things to mono if you need to do that as well. So you can see we have a miniature version of the mixer from Studio One right on our iPad. And we have a lot more functionality within this as well. We do have our channel controller. So I went to my kick drum and here's my macro control. So it gives me an XY pad and here's all of the things we would normally do inside of our controller. So we have different buttons. So we've gone over this in the past. If you're a being different plugins and you have that set to a button, you can access that button right here. Same thing with the control knobs and there's another page. So there's actually two XY controller pads. Just going to hit the X in the top right to close that out. We didn't go over it before, but we also have our pan sliders above our faders. And I'm just going to double tap to put it right back to center because I don't want my kick drum off to the side. Now we're going to look at the left hand side real quick. Currently you can see we have fader selected, but if we were going to move on to something else or need to adjust something else, we can go to our inserts and we can see all of our inserts from here. We can turn them on or off on a channel by channel basis, or if you need to adjust some things, it will give you some controls but it'll give you more controls if you're using Studio One plugins. Right now I opened up a third party. This is actually JST Clip. All right, so on my kick drum, I threw on a fat channel. And when I click on fat channel, now I have access to all of the different controls within the fat channel and I can manipulate them while I'm working somewhere else. Maybe I'm recording some drums and I can't sit in front of the computer here. I need to go be on the drum set, but I wanna just adjust some sound so I can hear it a little better in my headphones. I can now control all of the parameters of my fat channel right from the remote app. Moving down even further, you can go to sends. And from here, again, let's go to our snare track this time because we have more sends here. And we also have a send that's going nowhere. So let's use the remote app and get rid of that. If I press and hold and then take my finger off, I now get the option to remove that send. And I've done it from the remote app. Now let's go to snare verb. This is how much reverb I have sending from my snare. So I can increase or decrease this right from the remote app. And a double tap on level will snap it to zero. I know that the Studio One default is minus six, so I'm gonna get pretty close to there. Underneath sends, you have QMix. If you have your IO set up, that you have different outputs set up for QMixes, you'd be able to adjust those QMixes with the remote app. This is really handy. Again, if you're working with somebody who's in a different room, they can adjust their QMix to their preference while you're in the control room working on your mix or working on whatever you need to do in order to make sure that the session goes by. They'll handle their ears, you handle the entire picture. Underneath that section, you have inputs. And now you can see, here's one of the microphones in this room. That's not the one we're looking at right now, but you can see here's one of them. Also, it looks like my meters have clipped at some point, but we're gonna ignore that for now. That's the inputs. Then you can also go to your outputs. I don't have any additional outputs in this session, but if you did, you would see them here. Let's go back to channels real quick. And that's a very quick overview of the fader or the mixer view of the remote app, but this isn't where the remote app ends. There's a lot of functionality in the mixer itself, but if you go to the bottom right, past the transport bar, you can see that we have the mixer selected, but next to that, there's six rectangles stacked in a three tall, two wide grid, we tap on that, we now have our macros. And these are all of the macros that you have within your session. You can see underneath our meter bridge on top, we're now looking at transport. And here's a ton of macros here. So if we hit return to zero, look what happens inside of our session. We're on bar three, return to zero, snaps us right back to number one. Now we go to view, we can open up the inspector. We can close the inspector, open the editor, open the console. There's a lot of functionality right in here. Now let's change over to console. You can add inserts, change your, which channels you're looking at. Actually, we're not looking at the console. So let's go back to view, open up the console, switch over to console. And now you can see I'm hitting next channel and a previous channel, and it's cycling through 
the different channels. There's so many things you can do in here. Look at all of these different buttons as we slide our finger across the different menu options. Automation is right here. You can also just slide the macro buttons themselves and get to the different sections. So now we're in macros. If you're a Studio One user and you use the show page, you also have show controls here as well. Now we haven't gone deep into the show page on this channel and we will in the future, but if you use the show page, then you also have your macros on your device right here as well. What's really handy as well is next to the transport bar, you see two what look like little houses. So if I click on this, this is showing me all of my markers. So I can click on this and go to the start, but maybe I wanna do something different. So I'm actually gonna use the transport bar on top and go to about, oh, 20 seconds or so. And now that I'm here, Inside Studio One, I can see I'm just before bar seven, and that's fine. They do have different time scales, and I'm okay with that for now. But what we can do is the little house with the plus symbol is actually to insert a marker. You can see inside my main session, I now have marker number two. If I move forward some more to 30 seconds and add a new marker, there we go, marker three. Now I can use the remote app to navigate through the markers if I needed to do that as well. That's all for now. If you found anything informative, please like and share the video. For mixing or lesson information, check out timflansbaum.com. And if you have a question, ask it in the comments and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.